Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. In today's tutorial, you're going to learn how to cut out patterned paper using your Brothers Scan and Cut STX-125. For those of you who are beginners, this is a great way to create embellishments for your projects. The concepts you'll be learning about cutting out patterned paper, these concepts can be used to apply to cutting out stamped images. For those of you who are not beginners, I have an extra feature to show you. If you have an STX-125, I'm going to show you another way, yet another way to create layers for your images. In fact, I'm going to show you two ways to do it. I'm going to show you one way to do it using direct cut and another way to do it using a feature called scan to cut data. So for those of you to, who like to delve deep into settings of your machine, this is the tutorial for you. All right, so I'm using Wrapped in Plaid Designer Series Paper by Stampin' Up. This is about all I have left from my stack of 48 sheets. Okay, so I might not be able to show you every single pattern, but this Wrapped in Plaid paper has gold foiling throughout it. And the coordinating colors are Knight of Navy, Shaded Spruce, Cherry Cobbler. These, some of these colors are gonna be going on sale this week during our online extravaganza. And I don't mean this paper, but I mean some of the colors. If you want to get coordinating cardstock as well to go with this paper. So be sure to go to my website and sign up for my newsletter. All right, that'll be linked in the description. Let's get right to it. So I'm just going to go through the papers that I have here, and then I'm going to grab the one that we're going to be cutting. Now this one, although would be great for cutting out pattern paper, I just thought it was so cute and keeping it in a small pattern. So I'm not using that one. And a lot of these will cut out. I mean, you can cut out very, very small patterns, but sometimes small patterns are great for making other types of projects. So I like, so in this case, we're gonna be cutting out these trees because these are perfect for making embellishments. And I thought these are too big to be used for a background pattern. So that's why I'm using these. Whereas I like, I like the little stockings to use as background patterns. Okay, so again, gold foiling, wrapped in plaid, great paper. So now we're gonna take it and we're gonna put it on the mat. Now, for what I'm gonna show you, because we're gonna be talking about layering after you cut out your pattern paper, you need to not put this too close to the edge of the mat because if you do, like say you put it over here and then you try to put outline distances around it, it's gonna say you're out of the cutting area. So just trust me, but put it somewhere Sort of put it here in the middle but I kind of like to put things on the line so like one two three I put it about the four inch mark and then one inch down only so it's not near the edge of the mat but then I can find the space later because when we when we make layers on these trees I want to figure out exactly where I was when I put the next paper in all right so we're gonna load the mat and I'm gonna bring this bring my camera over Again, what I'm showing you for the first part of this tutorial can be used on any, and I say any, any scan and cut machine, not design and cuts, scan and cuts. I get asked this all the time. Should I get a design and cut? Well, if you want to scan and cut, you don't want to get a design and cut because you can't scan. But any scan and cut will do what I'm showing you. All right, so loading the mat. Let me move some of my stuff out of the background. We don't want to... We don't want the mat to knock over my coffee cup later. That would not be funny. All right, so here we go. Let's just bring this right into here. As close as it'll go. There we go. So you turn on your machine. You have pattern and scan. We've loaded the mat using this button here. Okay, so now I'm going to show you, getting my stylus, all the steps for cutting out patterned paper. Okay, so we have, we're going to be using scan. Okay, when you, you turn on your machine, you see pattern and scan. Now we're gonna use direct cut first, and then later I'm gonna show you scan to cut data because one of my viewers, it just, it just recall, you know, I just said, let me do this one because a viewer, Pam, asked me about this earlier, and I'll, I'll get to that. So let's just start with direct cut. We'll do this one later, direct cut. Direct cut is when you wanna cut something right out without saving it, but it's still asking you, where do you wanna put the data? So even though you're not saving it, permanently you still have to pick so I always just select my machine this is a temporary storage area okay I'm gonna go ahead and make it 12 uh, the scanning area 12 by 12 because 
this piece of paper is somewhere in the middle of the mat. This is how to change your scanning area. So 12 by 12, you could use 12 by six as well. Even though the paper's in color, I'm using, oh, the reason I'm saying you could use 12 by six, let me just go back to that. You could use 12 by six if you have, if you put your paper up in the top right or the top left corner, because these pieces of paper are only 12 by six, or six by six. However, I put my paper, my designer series paper in the middle of the mat, sort of in the middle. That's why I have to use 12 by 12. Okay, and, and if you're using the CM350 right now, you don't even have that option. Now, even though I'm using color paper, I'm still gonna scan in black and white recognition mode because this has good contrast between the foreground and the background. So let's say okay, let's say start. Of course, I'm, you know, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe and also know that I always show you projects. I don't just show you how to use the scan and cut. I show you what to do with all of these embellishments, what to do with all of the things you're cutting out. So you have visual examples of how you can use products and how our Stampin' Up! products coordinate with the embellishments that you're cutting out. So you are going to apply what you learn by figuring out what I'm doing with all of these embellishments. In fact, when I get paper like this, I didn't even think of using it as a background. I just, I saw those trees and immediately thought, I need to cut these out with my scan and cut. All right, so here's, here are the trees. We're gonna say okay. So the first thing you're gonna do is, you can notice my mat's very, my mat's very dirty. So we don't, wanna, we don't wanna try to mess with all the background areas. So first thing you'd wanna do is make a selection just around the paper, okay? But you don't wanna go too far in because you don't wanna cut off you know, the different parts of the tree. So there we go. So first we make a selection. Now, the next thing you're gonna do is ignore object size. Now it's safe to say the trees are, you know, let's see, they're about almost two inches high. So if we ignore, if we ignore objects about an inch and a half, oops, that's too much. Don't ignore them too much. If you ignore about an inch and a half, you're going to ignore all the dirt, like the pieces of trees that got partially selected and the dirt that's still kind of in my selection area. If, you, however, you go too far, if you ignore objects that say, if you go up to two inches, you'll be ignoring the very thing you're trying to scan. So you want to do ignore object size up into about the size of your object that you're trying to scan. Let's see if that worked. Say okay. And it did work. It got rid of all the little bits of dirt, but it didn't get rid of my trees. It got rid of my half tree, and that's okay. I wanted to get rid of my half tree. You don't want to cut out half a tree. All right, so next I'm gonna do an outline distance. I like outline distances around my stamped images and my pattern paper. Okay, I'm gonna use a 0 .04 outline distance. So this is for the first cut. We're gonna cut the trees with a, let's go ahead and select. We said, okay, we're gonna select cut. We're gonna cut the trees with a little bit of white around them. And it's gonna take three minutes, so I will see you in three minutes. We're gonna hit start. I won't make you wait for that. I'll continue the recording. But let me just show you, before I forget what the outline distance is. So this, the reason I selected an outline distance is I want that little bit of white around the trees for contrast. Okay, so see you in a few minutes. We'll do the next part of the tutorial. Okay, we're finished cutting out our trees and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to remove the trees from the mat. And then we're going to replace, we're gonna put some more paper right in this general area. That's why I'm showing you this. So we're gonna take, so this is the paper we're gonna use next. And we're gonna use, this is, so the trees are in shaded spruce and they're on a white background, like a whisper white background, coordinating color. Of course, gold is also coordinating. So we want them, we're gonna take the trees off using a little spatula, but we're leaving the mat in place right now for the first little scan and cut tip and trick I'm showing you, okay? We're leaving, we're not unloading the mat because we wanna do something else while it's still loaded. So we've, we're removing all these awesome little trees that we cut out, okay, loads of embellishments. You'll get to see how I use them. And now we're gonna take, so remember, about three inches over, that's why I told you to know where you put your paper so right about there that's where we're putting the paper right where the last paper was putting this piece okay so now i just liked how this piece had all those different shades of cherry cobbler in it so that's why i chose this piece for the background of my cheese and i'm actually doing this because i'm still preparing for my holiday bazaar so i'm actually going to go ahead and cut these out to show you what i do so click okay and now, we, went, we just did, this is the outline distance of 0.04. So what we wanna do is go back, hit the back button. 
And all we want to do is change the outline distance one smidgen up. Okay, I called a smidgen, just one little, one little unit up. So we have an outline distance of 0 0.04. We're going to go ahead and we're going to change it to 0 0.08. That just adds a little bit bigger of an outline distance. Okay, so we'll say okay. We'll say okay again. And now we're going to go ahead and say cut. And we're going to cut out all the same amount of trees we just cut out. Start. Okay, the same amount of trees, but this time we're cutting them out with a larger outline distance. Now let me show you that before I pause the camera. Let me, let me grab one from earlier. Okay, so we this is our first cut. We just cut out a page 0 0.04 outline distance, and now we cut out a page of 0 0.08 outline distance. Why? So that we can have an outline, so we can have contrast behind our trees. Okay, so we'll get to see how I use this concept in just a minute when we're done cutting these. See you in just a minute or two minutes. Welcome back. We're finished cutting. We say okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and just hit the home button and we'll get rid of all that. Okay, so by far, um, and then we're going to unload the mat and everything else. Let me show you. By far, the easiest way if you're cutting out a sheet of pattern paper and, and trying to make backgrounds and layers for them. By far the best and easiest way is direct cut. Okay, so you just, you can just do this and I did it to all my paper. That's what I did. I used direct cut. Where I cut out the, the first layer with the 0 .04 outline distance. I cut out the second layer with the 0 .08 outline distance. And now we have all these really cool, all these cool embellishments to use and they're layered. So we can use them for cards and projects, which I'll show you. So that's by far. Now with direct cut, you can't save anything. Okay. It's, you can only directly cut out your stamped images or your pattern paper. But with scan to cut data, you can save, you can save what you cut out. Okay. So let me get rid of these trees for a second. I'm going to put a piece of whisper white on the mat just to keep the background from being so dirty. So I'm putting a piece of white on the back of the mat and I'm going to go ahead and adhere because I don't have any more pages of trees. I could actually do this with a whole page, but what I'm going to show you next is what's called scan to cut data. I'm just adhering this tree to my mat because I don't have any more sheets of the paper. I've cut out all four pages of my, of my trees. Okay. So you could do this to a whole page of trees, to one tree, what I'm about to show you. So what I'm about to show you is the difference between direct cut and scan to cut data. So all I've done is put a tree on the mat. And I put it on a piece of whisper white background because you saw how dirty my mat was. So whenever you're using uh, scan to cut data, it's good to have a nice clean mat or to put something on a nice clean background. All right, so we're back to the very beginning, okay? Pretend we just turn on the machine. Now we're gonna go again, we're gonna, you see pattern and scan, we're gonna go to scan. Okay, we've just done direct cut. We cut out all our trees directly, we cut them out. Just, I'm just reviewing this again. I don't want anyone to get confused. This is all you need to do if you're cutting out pattern paper. Then we added a bigger outline distance with direct cut and we cut out another, we cut out the rest of the paper. However, I was asked by Pam, one of my viewers on my Facebook page, she said, well, I want to, I want to scan in something and make multiples of it. Okay. So what I'm about to show you is if you have a shape, maybe this tree would work for this, but it doesn't really matter what you have. If you have a shape and you want to make more of it, then, then you can do what's called scan to cut data, okay? And not only, not only that, so I'm not just addressing her question about making more, but I, I wanna tell you a couple more things you can do in scan to cut data. This is things I cover in my, in my Brother Scan and Cut courses. All of my courses are gonna be going on sale from the 20th of November till probably the rest of the month. So if you wanna be on my newsletter and get, get the sale coupon codes, please join my newsletter. All right. So I want to just delve deep into this though, because I know my viewers are like, I already know how to cut out pattern paper. I want to show you this, okay? Scan to cut data. So this is something cool. So we're going to just go ahead. We can just probably use, I think here, scan area, doesn't matter, 12 by six, because I think my tree's in the top half of the mat, which it is. All right, so scan to cut data. We're going to scan in the tree and then you can do things to it. Like I'm, I can answer Pam's question about, yes, you can make multiples of it. Okay, there's other things you can do with scan to cut data. 
you can you can enlarge the image that you scan in you can reduce the size okay so you can multiply it enlarge and reduce the size all right your options with scan to cut data because right now we're going to store this tree are do you want to outline just the outline of the tree that's the one we're picking okay this is just the outline of the tree that's that's the first option the next one's asking if you want to do the inside and outside of the image like i've done this with a beautiful day stamp set I showed how to scan the inside and outside of stamped images and we cut out the inside of a butterfly and this last one's just getting all the lines on the page which is a hot mess so I always use the first two options so we want just the outside of the tree so we're gonna say preview so you're gonna see what I'm saving okay preview let's say okay now it's asking where do I want to save it I want to save it to you can either save it to your machine you can save it to Ke Brother Canvas Workspace, or Canvas Workspace, they're calling it now. Um, or you could save it to your USB stick. Okay, whenever I show you how to use Canvas Workspace, by the way, you can always use your USB stick. But I always try to get my viewers to get their wireless enabled. So anyway, let's just say we're going to save it to our machine. It's just the easiest thing. Hopefully my machine's not too full. It is. It's saying full, but that's okay. You get to watch me troubleshoot. Here, let's delete here. We'll delete this little doggy. I did the doggy with scan to cut data before. All right, so I think it's saying, okay, I think it's, I, I had to delete one thing to make some room. Your machine shouldn't be full if you haven't done this yet. All right, so it's number 80. It's number 80. So there's my tree. Now, we can't do anything with it yet because I got to show you how, we're going to say okay. So let's just go home and we're going to say okay. So now I want to show you now what you would do. So you, you scanned in a tree or a page of trees or whatever, your stamped images, whatever you, you scanned in. You've used scan to cut data. It's on your machine or it's on the wireless. So now we're going to go ahead and retrieve the data. Okay, so you turn on your machine and you see pattern scan, but we want to do retrieve. And now it's asking where do you want to retrieve it from? This is the machine, Canvas workspace, the thumb drive or USB stick. And this is when you have a USB directly connected to your computer. Another hot mess. I don't try that one too often because I have too many things going on with my USB. Like I have other printers, I have wireless devices, I have a mouse. Anyway, I never use this one. I never try to connect directly with the USB. I always like using wireless. Let's not digress. We're gonna we're gonna select the machine because that's where we saved the, the tree to the tree. And we're gonna go scroll to the end. There's our tree should be the number 80, file number 80. There. There's the tree. Okay. Here's the power of scan to cut data. Let's say okay. Now, I'm so excited about this feature, I can't even tell you. I've had the, I'm on my third scan and cut machine. First of all, scan to cut data. A, the reason I'm excited is because you can move things around the mat. B, I'm excited because we can go to object edit and we can enlarge things. Okay, I'm gonna show you all the things you can do. But the real neat thing is a feature I found is this one. Okay, so we can enlarge. Uh, we can duplicate. Let me show you duplicate. We can make more of these. Okay, we can make more. We can reduce the size. Let's go back, reduce the size. These should be review if you've been watching my channel. You know how to enlarge and reduce things. But here's the exciting part is this. The outline distance you can add from within the scan to cut data now. Now, I'm on my third machine. I was never able to do this with my CM300 or my CM350. Now, with scan to cut data, so before, if you use scan to cut data, you had to, you were stuck. You open up your tree or whatever, and you can enlarge it, and you can reduce it, and you can multiply it. See, we just multiplied it by this one here and make more of them. However, you were never, never able to add outline distances. So let's move all these big trees over to the side and just use this little tree as an example. So here's my little tree, and um, I'm going to add an outline distance around it. Check this out outline offset distance it's called offset not it's not the same as out I mean it, it is the same but it's called offset look how cool that is so now not only can I save something I'm gonna say okay now what that did when I added the offset is it made a multiple of it look at that look how cool that is okay so I'm excited about that it was kind of like oh I discovered that and I was like that's pretty neat to me. So now when you scanned and you save things, 
and you retrieve them, you can add offset distances. Now, of course, these, these don't exactly correspond with the same numbers as the other outline distance, but you get the idea. And then you can move these around and you can cut different layers. So imagine the possibilities now. You can cut multiple layers. So here we could do, once you get an outline distance, you can add multiple outline distances and make multiple layers. All right, so what else can we do? We can rotate, see, rotate. There's, I'm going to rotate the tree. And then as I was making this tutorial, I thought of one more thing to tell you you could do, which is kind of be kind of fun, but I'd rather do this on Canvas Workspace, but still it's kind of fun, is one more thing you could do is you could weld shapes together. So if you select two shapes, you could weld them together. And I thought that would make a neat folding Christmas card shaped as a Christmas tree if you welded two trees together. Of course, I would probably use a different kind of tree than this one with the little jaggedy edges, but you get the idea. So scan to cut data is when you want to and then if you want to, oh, by the way, if you want to save it over the top, if you want to resave it after all your edits, you just save it and you can overwrite the project. Okay. That so you can overwrite it. So now, oh, by the way, it has no memory. Okay. So you get the idea. So if I were just going to cut out pattern paper, I would use direct cut, direct cut, cut out stamped images, cut out pattern paper, and you can create layers. Okay. But if you want to do something with, with like the viewers are asking me, I want to make multiples. I want to maybe rotate them, resize them. You want to do other things to it, then use scan to cut data. Okay, so I hope I covered that in detail, what the differences are between the two. I get it. That's my third most common question. That's, I get, I have a big list of questions I get asked constantly. In fact, I created a scan and cut user group on, on Facebook. If anybody's interested, I'll, I'll link that in the description because I, I was trying to cut down on questions I get asked like all day in my inbox, but it didn't really cut down on questions, but it's still a fun group and I'm, I'm having fun with it. And I hope, I hope people, but people are posting their projects there, which is awesome, really awesome. But not a lot of people are asking questions there yet, but we'll get there, it, it's a process. All right, so projects. I always tell you, I show you projects. I mean, at the, if you're new to my channel, what do you do with all these really cool things that we just created and I have projects to show you. All right, so first my moose, and I'm getting ready for this, you know, holiday bazaar. So I created some ornaments with uh, Merry Moose, the stamp set. I stamped onto wood, okay, using uh, stays on black ink. And I put Merry Moose on the back of the ornaments, which they're glued in there now. They're not really glued in, I'm using a glue dot. So I can actually show you that I put Merry Moose on the back. See, because I put, I put a temporary glue dot. So I put Merry Moose, Merry Christmas, I mean, Merry Christmas on the back of these. And then there's the trees. Now in the Merry Moose set, stamp set, which by the way, if you want it, it's, it's in our holiday catalog and, and uh, be sure to check out the link in the description. But the uh, punch is already, the, we've, we're already out of the moose punch that goes with this, but my scan and cut users don't need a moose punch because you have a scan and cut. So anyway, so don't be, don't be discouraged if you can't get the moose punch, you can still get the moose stamp set. Now we have trees in here and I have showed on this channel how to cut out trees using the brother scan and cut from this shaded spruce. I even showed you how to make them in different shades of shaded spruce color. One of the colors that's going on sale on the, on the 20th, we're having an online extravaganza with many of our colors on sale. But anyway, I showed you how to cut out trees, but then you'd have to stamp them and cut them and scan them and color them. I mean, not cut up, color them. You'd have to stamp them, cut them, everything, right? It was so much easier just to cut out this pattern paper. So I, this is Mary Moose. I stamped back to this project. So I will, when I run out of these trees, which is going to be soon, I will start stamping them again and cutting them out. But you saw how easy it was to use direct cut. Okay, so that's the ornament. That's project one. Again, scan and cut. Uh, this one's a scan and cut. I cut out the little, the little raccoon. Okay, so these are ornaments for that I would sell at a holiday bazaar and I would give them as gifts. And I've already sent some out in my care packages as gifts. All right, project number one. This is when I'm using just the scan, a direct cut, where we just use the trees. Okay, another example of just using the trees with no layers on the trees is this one. This is just my little, uh, are these Skittles or M&Ms? I do these with Skittles and M&Ms. So I use the wrapped in plaid again. Those are my embellishments. Now getting into another one. I just, so I, I was making these little boxes for with my wobble springs here, with my little snowmen. And I just thought, hey, shaded spruce, even though I'm in a different, now, now I'm jumping sweets, okay? This is wrapped in plaid. Then I'm like, well, shaded spruce matches 
the this this suite right which is called let it snow so i threw a little tree inside the inside of the box to jazz up my little box these are just little party favorite boxes i decorate them with the scan and cut meaning i just make little shapes to go on them with the scan and cut i cut out the snowman with the scan and cut all right now let's get into the layers of trees so i showed you how to do the trees without layers i showed you what i would do with those because i'm always trying to be practical here when i show you things you know what can you do with these well what can you do with these now that they're layered, you can do this. You can make these little these little holders. And I wanted to just show you, I did have some that I haven't adhered yet together. So I can just show you, it's a simple little diaper fold and I've shown this on my channel before. See, here's one I haven't adhered yet. So a diaper fold is when you take, and, and six by six designer series paper is perfect for diaper folds, by the way. Diaper fold is a six by six piece of paper. It doesn't get easier than this. Okay, you fold it in half. And then you use a little spatula to help score it. So there you got a triangle. And then you fold at the same time, you fold the two sides in at the same time until you get them about straight. When you get them straight, then you use your little spatula to really cre get the creases down. And then you fold the top flap. There's your diaper fold. That's a diaper fold. When I got one of these at a swap, when I went to an onstage event, I was so excited. I came back and dissected it and figured out how it was done. And now I've been using diaper folds for you know a year or two now. And I use them for a lot of things like Ghirardelli chocolate holders. And then by the way, I do use rolling adhesive right there, right there, right there, and then right under the flap to kind of keep this together. So I use it for Ghirardelli and chocolate holders. Okay, that's what I use it for. Um, where were we? We were at the Ghirardelli chocolate holder. Okay, so that was a diaper fold. And then I the, the sentiments from birds of a feather. Um, there's the layered tree and there's your Ghirardelli square. And this little tree is this embossed. This gold embossed star is from the Most Wonderful Time project, a product medley in our holiday catalog. And I'm using lots of holiday catalog products together. And finally, I wanna show you my tea holders. I am also getting ready at the bazaar, uh, for the bazaar with. And these, again, are using those layered trees that we just cut out using our scan and cut. And this is shaded spruce and with the, the little night of, what is it called, not, not, Wink of Stella. Wink of Stella glitter on the trees. In fact, I might do that to all my trees. I kind of like the Wink of Stella. And the joy is from, hold on, so many stars possibly? Stars, stars, stars. Anyway, it's from something where I've been making, I'm making a lot of projects with it. I think it's called so many stars. And I did something else with the plaid paper. This has nothing to do with the scan and cut, but just to show you another project I'm working on with the perfectly plaid. Okay, so the T, the T is using the same joy as using in that, that tag. And what else did I wanna show you about the T? Oh, honey sticks, which I get from Amazon. I'll link to my honey sticks if you're interested. I just get honey sticks and I put them in there. And I think that just sets the project apart from just having a tea bag inside a holder. Now I do, I do tea holders and I think they're cute just as they are. But when you put the little honey with the, the herbal tea with the honey stick, then it just makes the project that much fun. That's much more fun. And the little angels are from the Most Wonderful Time Project Medley. I think that's all I have to show you. I, I'm working on so many things. My table's pretty full. And I will link, oh, here it is. It is, that was what it was called, So Many Stars. I knew I had it out. This is where I got the sentiments from. Again, a holiday catalog uh, stamp set. Again, we're having a sale, so check out my, please request a newsletter or a holiday catalog and or a holiday catalog from the link I'll provide you. And that way you'll be alerted of our upcoming online extravaganza starting the 20th of November. And my courses, my brother scan and cut courses will be going on sale for the whole rest of the month because I wanted to make sure I had enough coupon codes to use for Black Friday. So I'm starting on the 20th and they'll be going till the end of the month. And you'll be getting alerted that, alerted to that. So thank you for watching. This is the Paper Chef. See you next time.